Hello everyone, welcome to the Kukli Bushcraft channel. Okay, so we've got a knife review for you today. This guy. So this is the Joker Nesmuk. So uh, this knife, just so as you know, it was a gift. So just in case you think this might influence my honesty on the review. Uh, to be honest, as if I didn't think it was a good knife and it was a gift, I wouldn't be reviewing it. So, Joker Nesbuck. So, it was, it says there, by Jay Sabater. That's the designer. Okay, so you could say the designer was actually Nesbuck, uh, George Washington says. But it is a little bit different. In that, uh, probably, uh, George Washington says knife was a rat tail tang. It probably was nowhere near that thick, and it will have been intended more for uh, more for game prep and for hunting. He had a folding knife that he did most of his camp chores with, along with a double bit axe. So, and what I've been using this for is basically for for wood prep, for fire prep, and general camp chores. So a lot of the things that Nesmuk would have been using his uh, his axe for, to be honest. So, yeah, what can we say about the design? I mean, the, uh, the shape of the blade, and that's intended primarily for skinning, or belly opening. Uh, you know, you can get that under the skin, uh, that way, that way you don't cut into all of the intestines. Uh, yeah, I can't say I've done that with any animals. I tried it with a fish, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think with a, I think for a fish you want something a little bit more pointy, really. But what what the. Uh, Yeah, I think for a fish, you want... I think... <laughs> I think for processing a fish, really, you want something more pointy. But uh, what that hump is good for is it gives the tip quite a bit of extra strength. It's also quite handy to grip for things like scraping birch bark before using a ferro rod so which has got a nice sharp spine scraping a ferro rod no problem so for processing tinder I've heard people say with the Nesmux that it gives you something more meaty to hold on for to hold on to when you're using it as a draw knife uh, I don't really find it makes that much difference for that but yeah extra strength and uh, an extra holding position is quite comfortable for scraping like this right so handle broomstick type walnut scales I, I generally like to have a bit of a belly there but yeah I didn't really like the grip that much at the beginning because I'm used to having a belly but it's pretty secure it's uh, not too thin around there and yeah it is actually quite a comfortable grip when you get used to it so we've got Scandi grind so yeah the uh, the steel is just a reminder <laughs> Sandvik 14C 28N so it's the same steel as you get on a Mora Garberg there are a few other manufacturers that make a Nesmuk uh, the two main ones, Condor, and that comes in 1075 steel, and Brisa, which is 80 CRV2. And, uh, yeah, the advantage of the 80 CRV2 is you could throw a spark off the back of it with a stone. Uh, or with the right stone, obviously, flint or quartz or something along those lines. Uh, whereas this is a stainless, it won't work. The Condor version 
it's a carbon steel but the steel's just too soft so uh yeah uh the condor version is very very similar to the bush law i own a bush law and i think uh looking at this comparing this to the bush law this is this feels and looks a much better quality knife it holds its edge better uh 80cr v2 is a really good steel uh for a comparison uh yeah, I know, different manufacturers, the heat treatment's a little bit different, but you might get some kind of an idea if you look at comparisons between the Tarava Yaka Ripoko and the Mora Garberg. So I think in comparisons that generally they're, they're quite similar when it comes to edge retention and ease of sharpening with the uh, 80C RV2 having a very slight advantage on edge retention. Uh, so the the other difference is the Brissa version, it does have a bit of a belly there, and it doesn't have a lanyard hole. So, yeah, also, the little hump there, it does give it a little bit more, when you hold it back here, it does, it does seem to chop quite nicely for, for a five inch knife. It's about five inches. Yeah, it's about five inches. I'll uh, I'll show the knife in action and put some specifications in afterwards.
Okay, so this curvature on this knife, I mean, yeah, as if you've got curvature on a blade, it helps to slice. And quite often you've only got curvature here, uh, which is if you're cutting cordage or things like that, things things can slip off. Whereas as if you've got a bit of curvature here, you can just slice straight through things. Really works quite nicely. And also with the hump here, it really works quite good. As if you get your thumb behind there, it's quite comfortable. And then you can slice with the end portion. So I nearly forgot to tell you about the sheath. So really, really nicely made. So double stitched. Uh, you've got a hole there, a hole there for extra attachment points, should you need them. Uh, I really think, as if you had a cord going th from there to there, I think this would work very nicely with a Baldrick rig, which is something that I'm likely to be doing in the winter, because that's the way I like to carry my knife over the top of my jacket. So that should work really quite nicely, I think. Uh, the one thing is the retention is it's okay, <laughs> but it's not as good as I'd like. But yeah, in general, very, very nicely made sheath uh, with a good, strong welt. Yeah, awesome. So, would I recommend the Joker Nesmuk? Absolutely, I think it's a great little knife. I think it looks fantastic. With the black liners and the brass pins and the sheath. Uh, even if the retention could be a little bit better. Which I can fix myself. I can wet form this a little bit. Uh, but it has, it, has usen, it has loosened up a little bit with use. So, I've not had this a super long time. But it has had a hell of a lot of use. I've had it about a month. So, uh, I mean, I've, I've just been out fishing and hiking for uh, four days. Uh, so this is the fifth day of use in the field. I've, apart from that, I've had a couple of fishing trips, like a couple of fishing evenings, uh, at least one overnighter. I've taken it into work. I've used it. I've used it in the workplace. I've cut a ton of rope with it. So it has had quite a lot of use and uh, the sheath is loosening up, which I can, I can wet form it. I can fix that very, very easily. So apart from that, the knife itself, great little camp knife, nice strong tip, quite nice for scraping birch bark, uh, batoning, feather sticks, great little chopper for the size of it. it that, that really quite surprised me uh, yeah and also it, it came really really sharp and uh, I've only stropped it once and uh, I can tell it, it particularly around here it really does need some attention now but it's still got a working edge it's still got this this is the kind of edge that most people would be happy with uh, but uh, it's yeah. I need to uh, I need to get on the that on the strop again, maybe on the stone. Can't see any damage. I can't see any rolling, chipping, anything like that. No, no, no. There's nothing. Nothing visible. So all in all, this thing's a this thing's a, a great little knife. Uh, the the blade design works really well. It's uh, it stayed it stayed pretty sharp with uh, you know minimal attention, and uh, it's it's done great.
The only little niggle was with the retention and uh, I've soaked it in some warm water, let it dry and uh, yeah, I mean it's, it's good enough, if I shake it around enough it, it will come out but yeah I mean I, it got wet, the sheath got really wet and so I was using it on my belt's damp sheath and it it loosened up. To start with it wasn't a hundred percent bomb proof retention uh, so the retention could have been better but yeah I think that's fine so that really took absolutely no effort whatsoever and uh, it's really nicely made sheath it really is with the yeah with the little joker logo double stitching the little eyelets and uh, the uh, the dangler so yeah I've been carrying it like this bold rig rig so all it is is two loops so put that one on that side this goes over this this is really handy in the winter when you're wearing a big jacket so I'll just hook that onto that loop. It's also quite good as if you're keeping your knife in your bag. You know, so you can get, take it out, use it a little bit, put it away. You know, just so as you don't have to get on the bus with it. So, yeah, the retention, I mean, it does worry me a little bit more when it's a dangler. You know, because you're taking your rucksack off and it can get caught a little bit. But, yeah, it's fine now. And uh, it wasn't awful in the first place, but, you know, still, it's a lot better now. Right, cracking little knife. So this is another little knife I'm testing for review at the moment. There's no comparison. This is uh, this just works so much better. Well, well, that's going to be a ladle one day, hopefully, if I don't get bored of it. Anyway, guys, I'll get on with this, and uh, thank you very much for watching, everyone. And uh, please comment, like, subscribe, whatever, and I'll see you all again soon for another Googly Bushcraft video. Bye for now.